Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace.com. Visit squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson for more details. What's going on guys? It is the second video from the Galapagos Islands. It's sunset and we're heading to Floriana Island. So let's jump back on the boat and uh, start cruising. Yes, I know I have sand in what remains of my hair. I was rolling around in the sand photographing sea lions and mockingbirds. To see those photos, check out the last video I did from here in the Galapagos Islands. There's a link up there in the right hand corner. In the present, we cruise our zodiacs back to the tip top two. On board, we grab dinner and then notice about 10 Galapagos sharks following along the ship. Apparently the flying fish are attracted to the ship's lights and then the sharks to the fish. I know this is true because off camera, a flying fish jumped out of the water and hit me directly in the chest. In the morning, we awake to more finned animals swarming our yacht, a huge group of bottlenose dolphins. The game the dolphins like playing the most is the one where they literally jump all over the ocean, except exactly wherever I'm pointing my camera. We're on the Zodiacs, surrounded by about, I don't know, 100 bottlenose dolphins trying to get some footage on the wide angle lens of them jumping out but it's a little bit tricky literally I can see them right here below me but I'm missing all the footage Let's point you straight down and see if we can get this guy The whole experience with the dolphins is magic. In fact, the whole morning has been unreal. And well on a high, we float into shore and step off onto the black volcanic soils of this beautiful place. Ooh, okay, we are having a magic morning already. It's uh, about 8.30 and we've already been snorkeling at the Devil's Crown where we saw eagle rays, that was awesome. Uh, sharks, turtles, it's just been magic. And then we got onto the zodiacs and there was about 100, 200 dolphins, bottlenose dolphins, it's just been magic. And I haven't been filming anything underwater on this trip. I haven't been taking photos underwater. In the past, whenever I've done underwater, I've started to feel a little bit stressed about trying to get cool photos that I haven't really enjoyed it as much. So on this trip, I decided I really want to just enjoy that experience of being underwater without the constraints of a camera and trying to do underwater photography. I'm okay just doing photography on land and um, enjoying the underworld. So that's what I've been doing and it's been magic. It's been so much fun. And now we're on Floriana Island and we're going to a lagoon where there's sometimes flamingos. A short walk from the beach and we find ourselves at the edge of a lagoon that's outer worldly. Cracked soils and the despair of the dry season are on full display, as are a couple of flamingos. I love flamingos, don't get me wrong, but they're a bit difficult to photograph, so I move on without snapping an image. Instead, I climb up the lava rocks where I spot a beautiful lava lizard. And from the trail up above, there's actually an image of the flamingos down below. I, I say this a lot. I love destinations and places where every single day you see something you've never seen before. And the Galapagos is definitely one of those places. Here in Floriana, we've just seen this beach that has at least at least 25 turtles, green turtles. Some of which are mating currently in the water right now, and some of which are just hovering off shore and even some up on the beach. There was a couple hermit crabs running around as well, and it's just one of those places that's just unbelievable. Every day you come into the Galapagos Islands, you see something you've never seen before. Even if it's as small as a hermit crab, it's just so special. The hermit crab is like something out of a cartoon. He's so damn cute. 
And our naturalist was having a pretty good laugh at us all laying flat on our faces in the sand capturing eye level images of this tiny creature. The turtles were a little less exciting to photograph. They lay there with their heads on the sand, relaxing after a long day of fornication. As we leave the beach, I spot a couple Sally Lightfoot crabs that are colored differently than I've ever seen before. So naturally, I need a photo. We leave this spot that is offered so much on a high, and we head back to the ship. And basically, as soon as we get on board, we're popping off again. This time we're headed to a tourist haunt on the Galapagos Islands, Post Office Bay. Here, you leave a postcard without postage. Then, at some point, someone will come, find your postcard address to a place near to where they live, and deliver it for you. It's a pretty cool story. So we all drop off postcards and search for a card from our towns that we can deliver. Then, we head down into a lava cave for a bit of exploration. Okay, oh. <laughs> that was supposed to be graceful, but I don't think it ended up being graceful. Um, so yeah, this is the last full day on the Galapagos. It's been an awesome trip. And I kind of just wanted to do a bit of a sit down chat because I, I mentioned in my life update video that that's gonna be what I do sometimes, is just talk to you about how life's going. And there's something about being a YouTuber that it's kind of hard to describe without sounding whiny. But as a YouTuber, you always feel like you have to Produce you have to produce cool stuff all the time and it's hard to be real and authentic When you feel like you have to be cool all the time when you're not really cool. I'm not cool I'm just a normal dude and sometimes that can get really stressful and lead to anxiety and I think over the past two years I've felt like I haven't been able to produce cool stuff all the time and I think that led to a lot of anxiety here on the Galapagos, I've been really trying to only film what I want to film and only take photos of what I want to take photos and not feel any pressure. And it's been really nice, but on the back of my mind, I still do have that pressure occasionally. Like today, we've come to Floriana and I've been like, I need to make them some cool photos for this video. I need to do it. And then I kind of was just like, but I don't really want to. You know, I'm leading a group, I want to make sure everybody's having a good time, and I want to relax a bit. The past couple months were so stressful and I worked so hard that I kind of feel like I deserve a day off here and there. Like I deserve a bit of a vacation. And so this afternoon, we've got two hours left on Floriana before we have to start cruising back for Santa Cruz Island and eventually tortoises and then the flight out of here. And I'm just going to lay on the beach and suntan and not feel guilty about it at all. Well, anyone who knows me knows that I don't sit still for very long. I'm not the sun tanning type. I'm not the sitting still type. But occasionally, I need to remind myself that it's okay to not have a purpose and that I can just chill or wander or snorkel or take pictures that don't end up on a YouTube video. Well, that lasted about 15 minutes. I uh, spotted a blue-footed booby just like fly in and perch up on a rock over here. And I want to see if I can get a photo of him. The light is too soft and good for me not to want to photograph this dude. Unfortunately, he doesn't want a photo. And as soon as I get close enough for this photo, he flies away. I sit near his perch watching him fish and hoping he'll land again, but he doesn't.
However, I do spot a stunning Sally Lightfoot crab in some beautiful light. So, in my hour-long break from photography, I've managed to capture two photos. As the sun sets, we head back to the ship. Okay, it is 5.30 in the morning and we're just about to disembark our yacht here on the Galapagos. It's been uh, an awesome, awesome trip and there's still a little bit more to come. We're heading up into the highlands to see if we can find some uh, tortoises in decent territory, but it also looks like it might be raining. So this might be a bit of a mission. So tortoises, airport, long journey home. I've done three day Galapagos trips. I've done eight day trips. But never have I ended a trip to the Galapagos Islands where I thought I'd had enough. I always leave longing for more. This time is no different. So sadly, we say goodbye to the crew and journey from sea to land in search of giant tortoises. Luckily, they're not hard to find. So in years of non-bird flu, the Galapagos Islands are probably the easiest place in the world to do wildlife photography. Just there's not a whole lot of predators here. Is that a crane making that loud sound? Just because there's not a whole lot of like natural predators here for the animals, so the animals just aren't scared. We're just off of uh, the highway on the way to the airport at uh, a ranch. And at these ranches, there's just wild tortoises everywhere. From my current view, I see one in the water there. I see one down on the flats there. I see a big one way over there. They're just like everywhere. And yes, you have to keep your distance, at least two meters, but you can definitely get some cool photos. So I think I'm gonna go visit this guy in the water. Then I'm gonna go see that huge dude because he's legitimately massive. And uh, then we gotta get to the airport. This dude in the water makes for a nice photo, but I'm a bit torn. Rarely do I go black and white, but it might be better here. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Color? Or black and white? Oh, another thing, wildlife photography tip. Get to the eye level of the animal, even if they're, you know, in the grass. Makes for much better photos, much more impactful photos. This trip to the Galapagos Islands has been a special one. It's reminded me of why I do this job. It's not just to have experiences like laying in the grass with tortoises or swimming with sharks, but giving the gift of that experience to other people. We've had an awesome group here, and heading to the airport, it starts to sink in that it's all ending soon. For me, the end means a bit of a journey. I mean, even just to get back to the mainland, it takes us catching a bus across Santa Cruz Island, then catching a ferry to another island, then hopping on another bus, and finally a walk out to the airplane and a three hour flight back to Quito. Time to go home. The following day on my way to the airport, I stop in at a coffee roastery called Coffee Relief. 
where the owners are kind enough to welcome me in, share some knowledge, roast some coffee together, and just connect. If you're in Quito, it's definitely worth a trip out here for the coffee and the vibes. Okay, so I'm at Quito Airport. I spent the night in Quito, and then today I actually went to a, a coffee roaster just outside of Quito called Coffee Relief. One of my favorite things about coffee, much like photography, is it's a way of connecting people, and I absolutely love that about it. So I went to this coffee roaster to see if I could get some raw coffee to bring with me back to Portugal to roast myself, and it was really cool. I met like a, a local family business of coffee people and it was just, yeah, just a cool travel experience in general and something that would have never happened if I wasn't into coffee. Much like the same experiences I get from photography. I meet people in photography I wouldn't have met without it and I absolutely love that. So um, I'm about to fly home now. I, ha I fly Guayaquil, Guayaquil, Amsterdam, Amsterdam, Lisbon. And then I have to drive home. It's like a 28 hour journey in total. So yeah. You might see me a little bit more tired on the other side of this. Hitting home after trips like this are always filled with mixed feelings. On one hand, there's sadness. I'm immediately longing for my next adventure. But there's also relief. Relief that everything went smoothly and that all my guests are happy and perhaps a bit of a release of anxiety. And as a result, I really do enjoy these long flights home after a trip. I find them reflective, even meditative. And usually, I'm just so tired, I mostly just zonk out for 24 hours straight. I landed in Amsterdam. Slept probably five hours on that flight, actually, so I'm not that bad. But it feels like morning, and it's actually the afternoon. So I think jet lag's gonna hit me kind of hard. Okay, I'm back from the Galapagos Islands. I've been back for a little while and uh, I just realized when editing that I didn't finish this video. I want to talk really quickly about the Galapagos because when I did this change in my vlog to kind of make it more immersive into my life, I wanted to show you as much as I could of my life. And then I got to the Galapagos Islands and I only showed you kind of half of it. I only showed you the above water view of things. Whereas the underwater stuff was amazing. It was maybe my favorite part of the Galapagos Islands on this trip. And I didn't share that with you. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I am, I'm sorry. But I did really kind of want to just enjoy that and keep that experience to myself. And I really did enjoy it. So sorry. Um, if you are interested in the Galapagos Islands, I'm going to have another Galapagos Islands trip at some point, maybe 2026. And there's tons of new trips on the way. Uh, I just announced one to the Azores. I've got spots on my Greenland trip. So if you're interested in that, in those trips, there's a link in the description of this video to my trips and to my newsletter if you want to sign up for that and get information on what's coming up. Also in the newsletter, no, also in the uh, description of this video is a link to today's sponsor. And so I'm gonna end with a little bit of a message from them. Peace. Squarespace is a great place to build a photography website or blog. With Fluid Engine, a next generation design system, there are so many tools and templates that allow you to make a really professional website really easy. Features like an online store, an appointment booking platform, course hosting, Portfolio and gallery space make it a great place to set up your business. There's also an asset library to help you organize all your content in one place. For more information, visit squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson and receive 10% off your first purchase.